Okay, here's some questions that deal with uh, trigonometry and looking at, I guess, looking at trig on the quadrant and um, how we can figure things out. Okay, this first question says, and let's do, um, which one we're doing? This is 21. So we need to find the complement and the supplement. And when they say complement, they're saying angles that, uh, two angles that add up to 90 and supplement the two angles that add up to 180. So, uh, if I've got an angle of 12 degrees, something like that, so 12 degrees, 3 minutes, 14 seconds, I want to know what this angle is to get up to 90 degrees. So I'm just going to take 90 and subtract the 12, 3, 14 minutes, seconds. Now you can you can do this on your calculator, or you could do this. This would be zero and zero, and I know that there's 60 degrees in between each one, so I could borrow one from the 90 to leave 89, and I could add 60 to here. Uh, but then I could borrow one from here to leave 59 and add 60 to this one. So 60 take away 14 would be 46. 59 take away 3 is 56. 89 take away 12 is 77. So that would be the complement. Now to supplement, you do the same thing, but subtract 180. So 180 degrees minus 12 degrees, 3 minutes, 14 seconds, and you do the same thing. Okay, this next question is asking us to find the six trig ratios um, uh, for this particular angle right there. And we don't know what that, what that angle is. But I do know that this is an x value and this is a y value. So if I need to find all trig ratios, I need to know x, y, and r, or adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. So if I have an x and a y, I can use those to figure out what uh, r is. So x squared is negative 2 root 3 squared plus negative 4 squared equals r squared. If I square this, negative 2 squared will be 4. Root 3 squared will just be 3. Plus negative 4 squared will be 16. 4 times 3 is 12. And that will be 28. Is r squared. So r is the square root of 28. And 4 will divide into that. So I would call it 2 root 7. That's what r will be. So if they want to know all the trig ratios, I can start maybe with sine. Sine of that angle is going to be y over r. And y is negative 4 r 2 root 7. And you could leave it like that, but the root on the bottom typically we, we don't want. So we can multiply top and bottom by root 7. So we'll get negative 4 root 7 over 2 times 7. And uh, this 2 will go into this 4 twice. So I would write it as negative 2 root 7 over 7. That's what sine would be. And then cos of that angle is x over r. Same thing, x is negative 2 root 3 over r, 2 root 7. Do the same thing, multiply top and bottom by root 7. So on the top, since these are both under the radical, I can multiply them. So it would be negative 2 root 21 over 2 times 7 or 14. Again, 2 will go into here and 2 will go into there 7 times. So it would be negative root 21 over 7. I'd like to divide the 7 into the 21, but I can't because one's in a square root and one's not. So I can't... Uh, I can't divide those, so I'd leave that there. And then I do the same thing for tan theta. And uh, the reciprocals, so the cosecant theta, oops, cosecant theta, would be the reciprocal of this. So 7 over negative 2 root 7. And again, you should, um, uh, you should rationalize that denominator. Okay, same thing with secant theta is reciprocal of this. And again, rationalize the denominator. Okay, next question says, the function value in the quadrant given, find the other trig function values and give exact answers. Okay, so this, they say the sine theta 
is equal to negative one third. Notice I put the negative up top because the top thing is a y value and the bottom is an r, and r never has a negative sign, so y has to be negative. They also say it's in quadrant three. The angle's over here somewhere. And since it's down here, uh, the y value, of course, should be negative. So if I know y and r, I can do the same thing as the last question. Use this formula to figure out the one that I don't know. So y is a negative 1, r is a 3, and x I don't know. So x squared plus 1 is equal to 9. So x squared is equal to 8, and x is equal to plus or minus root 8. Now 8 is 4 times 2, so I'll probably write that as 2 root 2 as x. And then if they want all the ratios, I can go, okay, cos theta is x over r. X, I just found out, would be... <coughs> now, maybe I could tell whether it's plus or minus. Because this angle is to the left, X would be negative. So that means cos would have to also be negative. So this is going to be... It won't be a plus or minus. It'll actually be a minus. So this would be minus 2 root 2 over the R value was 3. So that's what cos would be. And, of course, secant would be the reciprocal of that, or 3 over negative 2 root 2, which you should rationalize by multiplying top and bottom by root 2. So you get 3 root 2 over negative 2 times 2 would be negative 4. So I usually I write it with the negative up top, so 3 root 2 over 4. That's what secant would be. And then you do the same thing for, well, I guess I know what sine is already. Uh, but I do the same thing for tan theta. It's y over x. y is negative 1. x is a negative 2 root 2. And then simplify it from there. Okay, the last question says find the signs, so whether it's positive or negative, of the six trig function values given that particular angle. So say we do that one. Negative 215 is going to be over here somewhere. So that's negative 215. If I find the supplement of that, that's this angle here, it would be 360 minus 215. So what's that? Uh, 45, 145. So this angle here is 145 degrees. I don't, you probably didn't need to figure that out. But I, I know that the angle is in this quadrant. And all they want to know is what the signs are of the, those trig ratios. So over here, I know because uh, y is negative, because we're below this axis, so sine theta has to be negative. Also because I'm to the right of the y-axis, and uh, to the right of that, the cos theta also must be negative. Tan theta is a combination of those two, so a negative and negative is going to be a positive. And then the reciprocal ratios uh, just follow the same sign. So if cos theta is negative, secant theta has to be negative. If tan theta is positive, cotan theta also has to be positive. Now another way you could do that is that cast rule. So C-A-S-T. And since it's in this quadrant, tangent is the only one that's positive. So that's positive, meaning the other ones have to be negative. You can use that. I typically like to think sine and y to go together. So if I'm below the axis, y is negative, also sine has to be negative. Uh, cos, I think, x, and so um, if the x value over in this quadrant is negative, then cosine also has to be negative. That's how I think about it. Okay, hopefully that helps you with those questions.